Right, so I shall have like Lewis. It's time to head back in time to nineteen fifteen and that interesting little town of Echo once more. Yes, we're on Nick's route at this time. And we'll follow up with what happened with his helmet and his lamp being stolen. Who did it? We'll find out. Ben looks as if the force kind of looked only comes from man who doesn't really know how to restrain himself. Seems to be the way of things when he happened to show up. How only have I been genial? You tried to hurt me. Twice. Bullshit. He's not denied in the way this sounds convincing. He blusters on. Took you by the hand and gave you a newcomer's welcome and everything. Then you stare in my face and try to make me look like a fool all the while you give thanks to those lazy union son of a bitches. He tisks and shakes his head. Grown man still blubbering like a baby. It's a sorry sight, really. There are people watching us through the windows now. I'm kind of glad for that. There's no telling what this man will do if he ever caught me actually alone. If nobody were here, I wouldn't be looking for a weapon bulging from his shoe or his pockets. Nick loves his hat. I feel so mad I could spit. You took it. He bares his teeth. Wrong. Then he slips into a lazy smirk. I might have a hunch you did. Okay. Who then? Somebody who has access to his keys all night. He nods. Like that tiger with the slanty eyes. Like I believe that bullshit. Shit he didn't prick. And most likely suspect you. He starts laughing. You only think I got time to waste on something like that? I do. Why'd you say a thing like that? Too stubborn thing there could be someone in your group of commie buttfuckers who values the real world of their lies and laziness. If you know anything about the real world, you know I care about my friend. I don't care about any of this convoluted horseshit. You're the one who's here, after all. Seems pretty clear to me that you know where the damn hat is. Of course I do, you bum. I'm just a messenger. You should be thanking me, really. Where is it? Nick lumbers to his feet and advances on the dog. It's a lot quicker than you think for somebody his size. I see the red in his eyes. Tell me! Whoa, 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 the boss is holding it, not me. Nick stops as worry crosses his face. The boss? James? He tilts his head and flashes me the white of his eyes. No, not fucking James. Briggs, a real boss. You goddamn slow. Oh, right. I never see his face, they keep slipping my mind. Where is he? At his office. This late? All operations work in overtime thanks to some people. Nick doesn't address the comment. He just starts walking down the gravel road towards the direction of the mine. Ben walks past me, cupping his paws to his muzzle and shouts. Yeah, welcome to the directions, big guy. Nick's still ignoring him. He bumps shoulders with me aggressively as he walks in the direction they came. Watch where you're standing. I try to shove him back, but he's right out of my reach. I don't have time for you tonight. His walk breaks into a jog as the gap between us grows and he disappears into the alley shadows of some nearby cabins. I think I should go after Nick, even though he doesn't seem to want me to. That is one way to sow dissent. I jump when I hear the tiger's voice, who shows himself emerging from the alley around the corner. I was worried you were somebody else. A practical thing to worry about. You grow more observant. What's the real reason Ben was here? 
and the bosses have a skeleton key. They have looked through our belongings during the daylight before. Men have been fired for their possessions. Is it a good idea to keep the map of the mine in your locker then? I have a way to know if they find it. They have not. I don't have time to ask him how he safeguarded his drawings, but I haven't called him in a lie yet. This is all reasonably believable to me. I look away, watching Nick slowly disappear down the long and open road. That isn't worth all this trouble. He knows tonight is the last opportunity we'll have to get the gold. You should watch over him. I don't think he'll go without that hat. I'll make sure he gets it back. The tiger smiles. And how? Hope he'll just give the damn thing back. I lower my voice. Or I'll swipe it if I have to. Like it belongs to him anyhow. How good. Theft is the only action men like them understand. By their rules, they have only themselves to blame. What are you going to do? I am going to prepare for tonight. In case we'd run into something we should not run into. You really think you can handle what's down there? I have a distraction, at least. But I don't think we should need it if we can get what we need and leave. I don't know if I'd really believe what he says, but it's not like we're going to leave that gold down there. If you want to get out of town and stay on our feet for a while, we have to have this money. He gives me a rough pat on the shoulder. The touch surprises me, coming from him. I might have surprised him too by the look on his face. But he didn't give either of us the chance to dwell on it, turn away and disappear into the shack. I start to walk the same gravel road that Nikolai walked, in the direction of the mine. As I leave the shacks behind me, there's nothing on either side of me but a near endless expanse of rock desert. I can't shake the feeling that somebody's eyes are on my back. Some of you might assume I'm here to make money off of this struggle. Hopefully not. That would certainly make me mad if it were me. Mad enough to kill, maybe. It's not so safe to be walking out and about by myself. I won't be alone once Nick is back. I can see the light of the office on the hills in the distance. As I get closer, the crickets stop chirping. That feeling like I'm being followed sneaks up on me again. But I can see very clearly, all around me, there's nobody here. So all I can do is keep walking forward until my feet hit the wood of the officer's deck. The immediate presence of another person at this hour makes it just a little less daunting. It's the secretary. She said her typewriter, typing away until she sees me. Uh, can I help you? I need to know where my friend went. His name's Mr. Crawl. He's a big badger, even bigger than me. He's in the office with Mr. Briggs. I need to know what they're saying. She looks away from me and continues typing. Hey, that's a closed conversation. Panic starts to take over. You're with Dimitri, right? She gives me a sharp look. So it's true, then. I know him. I'm with him. I really need to know what they're saying. The first time she takes her hands away from the keyboard. I can do what you ask. If you deliver a document for me tonight. To where? To the library at Town Hall. There's a man there who always stays late. I know him. She pauses. Then you should have some idea of how important the delivery will be. She points to the mail slot on the door. If you use a pen, there's enough of a gap to see without them hearing. I walk up to a desk and quickly snatch a pen from a cup. Why are you helping me? I'm not. I just think no one's sustainable industry has an inherent right to exist. Let's share a common goal. She gestures to the door. I crouch and use the pen to open the mail flap. I hear them better, I can see them, but I can find the right angle to see some of both men. Riggs sits with Nick's cap in his paw. He glares a little bit before setting on the table. 
Nicholas King is your name, yes? Nick's ears twitch and he scratches the back of his head, shuffling a bit in his chair. Oh, yes, sir. I see. Riggs puts on his cigar and sits back like he's thinking carefully about what to say next. The men, though, they seem to call you Nikolai Kroll. Want to explain why that might be the case to me? Yes, of course. Nicholas King is a direct translation of my birth name, Umlachia. They mean the same thing. The collie's neck stiffens and exhales to his nose. Well, but they don't. Do they? Nick shuffles again. I do not know what you mean. It's pretty simple. If they meant exactly the same thing, then they'd be the same thing. You know, Nikolai sounds as much like a Rus name as it is Lachian. You're a member of the USC now, aren't you? Yes, of course. And you wouldn't want a case open presenting unpatriotic proclivities to the courts? Now would you? No, sir. And Nicholas King sounds like a hard-working USC citizen. But Nick Kroll? Why, conspirator pops into my head where I can think of what the actual accusation might be. His eyes squint as he leans forward. Do you get what I mean? Nick puts his paw into one of his pockets, clenching it into a fist. Yes, I get what you mean. Riggs sits back, bouncing against the back of his chair, paws folded up. And Nicholas King it is. He picks up the hat again. Miss Hat wasn't made in this country, was it? Nick stares. What do you say? Because it's pretty apparent the gas canister runs two inches thicker than our standard hats. There's no burden transfer of gas from the cans of the company supplies to this one. I didn't ask if it was a burden. The larger cans increase the risk of a greater blast if you encounter pockets of gas. The matter of the gas container has never been an issue before. He clasps his hands and leans towards Nick again. Perhaps... But as new concerns arise, so do new conditions. Who brought you my hat? I can hear the ticking of the clock on the wall. It doesn't matter who brought me the hat. Nick stands. But it does. Somebody took this from my private locker. I take a seat, Mr. King. He resists for a while, but the collie stares back. Slowly Nick slumps back into the office chair. I'm happy to remind you those lockers and those houses are completely and irrefutably company property. If you look at the hand that confiscated your cap, just save yourself the trouble and consider it mine. Well, a hat is my property, sir. It's one of very few things on this planet that is mine and mine alone. I'd like to have it back. Briggs takes a few more puffs on his cigar, head bobbing as he's considering. Now go ahead and take it. Nick smiles. But if you choose to wear this hat on duty anywhere inside of my mines, then you can't work under CSGG employment going forward. Not that you're working much anywhere considering the strikes you and your lot are posing. The reason we strike is your inflexibility. This cap has saved my life more times than I can count. If you banish my cap from your workplace, then you're sensing me to starvation or a deadly accident. The better we're treated, the more we'll want to help you succeed. The strike, the anger, the instability. It can all go away. We just need to have the money to feed our families and the dignity to live our lives beyond just work. Rig sighs. He pinches the bridge of his nose and then rubs the bags under his eyes. I have a much better way of dealing with this operation's immediate problems. For a migrant, you're an intelligent man, Mr. King. You have impressive technical school credentials and years of experience without making many mistakes or sustaining major injuries. Unfortunately, you, a great deal of the softer sex, and a few remaining pockets of Europa, still seem to live in this naivete of a utopian dream. Do you want to know the secret most of the men who lead industry in this country will never tell their subordinates? Tell me. You see... I value fairness in its most brutal simplicity by letting men know the truth. 
The truth of this industrial age is a very simple one. Your life or your death, at the scale in which we work, isn't just a competition between you and another fellow. Between you are 100 other fellows. By today's standards, to prosper the family of five, it is demanded we slit the throats of 500 others. He smiles. Genteely, of course. So we do this as politely as we know how, as neatly and cleanly as our conscience allows. And I'm rather re-educated my own mother in this matter, because she's quite happy to live as she does, thinking in her old golden rule way. And of course, unbeknownst to her, I've already taken care of her 100 alternatives. So with that truth laid at my feet every day, do you really think I have the space in my head to give a damn about the life or death of a single man based on his eccentric proclivities? And to be frank, your odds of survival aren't good to begin with. But if push comes to serve, you should try to be one of the ones, not one of the hundred. And if you're in that makes you want to slit my throat, then I've already done you a favour. Get a new cap and do better, sir. Or else go home and starve. Nikolai stands, but says nothing. He takes his hat, he puts it on, he starts walking towards the door. Walking towards me. I'm still trying to process the chocolate I've just heard. My instincts are screaming to me to get up and move. They're coming. Go wait in the conference room across the hall. Quickly. The harshness of her voice tells me she won't even try to help me if I get caught. But the door to the conference room is thankfully unlocked and I don't see the light on. Unfortunately, I hear a movement in the room. I see somebody stand up in the dark. Who's there? I expected the room to be empty, but Beckett Moore is sitting there with an open briefcase full of paperwork. He hesitates before walking out of his door. You? Don't you say a damn thing. I know that I did something to frighten him the last time we spoke. Being on the tone of a man walking running scared. Not coming to work is one thing, but finding my wallet in your locket is another. Want to say something about that to me? In my locker, you said? Or did I stutter? Never mind, you open the damn thing if I have to be honest. But I gave you the code. Things exactly I'd have a pen on me at the time. Oh, fucking damn it. You look as easy to believe you're thick as tar. You don't need to say another damn thing. I believe you. I mean, you'd have the right skills to take my wallet out of my pocket without me noticing. Now, what the hell do you want? Just here to get a little time while a friend of mine finishes an appointment with the boss. I can imagine anything good if you had to speak directly to the boss. No, likely not. Sorry, but did you mind going now? I'm just about to speak when I hear a door shut in the main lobby. I think it's my time to leave anyhow. The tension returns to his suitcase in the low lights I walk out into the lobby. I don't see the secretary anymore. Maybe she went home. The fur on my neck stands as I walk past Briggs' office and make it to the exit of the building. I sigh with relief when I feel the cold night air on my face. I look around and see signs of where Nick might have gone off to. Walking down the path, I don't see anything. I can hear a metallic rattling. And when the dunes I see Nick hunched over. He sold him one kind of oil to his cap and watching it fill. I'm glad you got your cap back. Nick sighs. He lights a match and puts his cap back on his head. He turns his back on the stars. This really is the last night, isn't it? Yeah, I want to get the goal tonight. He nods. I knew that he would. And he's right to do that, of course. I have been stubborn. He tilts his head slightly as he notices the envelope under my arm. What is that? Is there a quick delivery into town I need to make before we meet up with Yao again? So I got to listen on the conversation you had with Briggs. You heard everything. I did. Nikolai shook his head. I did not think such evil in a man existed. Maybe he's just trying to scare you. He puts both of his giant paws on my shoulders. 
and it worked. All of it was calm. Calm like... like a still bog. There's horror in his expression. I'm trying to think what to say next while Nick steps in closer. His eye catches the envelope under my arm again. Was the envelope sealed? I don't blame him for avoiding trying to think about what he heard for very long. I don't think so. Tell me what it says. I sip a little bit of string off the wooden knob and flip open what looks like a printed telegraph. Nick's eyes widen as he looks over the paper. Do you know what this says, Sam? I shake my head. The National Guard are on their way. They'll be here tomorrow morning. That means we'll really need to be out of town by tonight. We need to warn William, Sam. Will he just tell us to look out for ourselves? Yes, but he doesn't know ahead of time he'll be overwhelmed. I don't know if I have time to deliver this tell where I meet Yao on the time in one night. We'll deliver your message first. Then we get the gold. Then we warn Will. Why in that order? This message is an obligation, not a favour. I don't want somebody after you if you fail to meet an obligation. William will want to keep us at the station all night once he knows the danger will be in tomorrow. The order of our actions is clear. Go quickly into town and deliver your message. I'll keep you out of company while we wait for you. I'll be right back. He pulls me close to him and presses his lips to mine. I can taste his warm tongue for I realise. When he pushes me away again I find it awkward to walk with the stiffness in my pants. And come back to me. Oh, quickly. I adjust myself, cheeks hot, not as I turn tail to make my way into town again. The library is less than a five minute walk from downtown. I go to the back of the building, worried I won't see the lit candle in the window. But it's there, like usual. I slip inside the door, careful to not make much noise. Porter Moore is sitting in the small desk with a lit lantern. His brow lifts, he looks me over, his eyes focused on the envelope that I carry. I have something for you. I inferred as much. However, I'm used to people delivering their own information. How very odd. And how very illuminating. He reaches an arm out, not even looking at me, and I hesitate. Don't read too much into that. My friend. The entire point of me is to read too much into everything. Now hand over the envelope, if you please. That's just one thing. Don't make me remind you that just one singular thing can vary greatly in magnitude. You're certainly right about that. If you need anything from him now, this envelope might be one of the most valuable pieces of information he could get his hands on right now. If I wanted to, I'd probably convince him to let me change my answers on the last time we met. Been having a lot of second thoughts about it as of late. But should I? I wasn't meaning Talion is the last time we talked. No. It's good that you're telling me now. I generally have my ways of finding out the truth eventually. Who was your primary contact with the Union? Ah, the quiet one. Then that's settled. You know, most people give a great deal to be able to change their story and be given a second chance. No soul on earth is given a third chance. And now then, would you quit mucking about and hand over that exquisite looking letter? I shove it roughly into his hands. He slipped the paper out of its parcel and held it closer to the light of his lantern. Let her a sudden squeal and puck at his lips like in the air puff out. Now oh, this could very well change everything. He folded the letter and tucked it into his pocket and started packing things into his bag. Where are you going? He let out a whistle and started talking in a sing-song tune. The timeliness of this message is where the money is. I can't sit around and wait for all the pictures of gold to just slip through my fingers. If any more business with me, I'm afraid it will have to wait. Shop's closed for the night. He starts pushing me toward the door. I tip him over if I wanted. The sheer pushiness of his attitude had a force of its own. 
Good morrow and good luck, sir. Adieu. Once I'm outside, I hear him lock the door. It's not long if I hear a door on the other side of the building open and close. I can't pretend I'm not curious about where he's going. If I tail him, then Nick and Yao would have to wait even longer. I'm not going to do that to them. I leave downtown behind me as I wander back in the direction of the miner shacks. As I look around me, I see more activity tonight than I've seen in a good while. Folks are out on their porches, rocking on their chairs and drinking together. Bars are typically less frequent than the hip look full tonight. Bottle caps rattling the tables, the men slam their fists down, laughing. I wonder if things will be the same after tomorrow. Or if I'll ever be the same once we're gone for good. I'm still worried about how William is going to take everything. Then again, he doesn't seem like the kind of person who struggles to find a way that works for him through life. He told us to survive. That's what we're going to do, if he can't be here. Don't even have to get back to the shacks to meet either of them. Yao and Nick are waiting there by the crossroads. My best friend looks at me with eyes as bright as ever, smiling at me. The tiger is loaded with sacks and tools, expression overcast in quiet determination. I know I had my initial res- reservations about trusting the tiger. Help is what I always needed. Even my luck hadn't been so great in the past. I knew you wouldn't take long. We do not have much more time to spare. Let us hurry. Though we walk the ordinary trail for a while, it doesn't take long to figure out we aren't going back to the official entrance. Liao looks ahead of us, then behind us. He takes a sudden left off the road. We follow him past shrubs and down hills till we come across a very familiar place. I see the big boulders stacked on top of one another. I can even see the fissure in the side of the rock, covered in brush, now that I know where it is. The place where Jack took me the first time. Do we have to go this way? Nick looks confused. Well, no. We don't. But it's the quickest way to the right path. This is the entrance where Jack almost killed me. Where I ended up killing him. The two give one another a look. The tiger cuts in quickly, as if embarrassed he hadn't thought to ask. There are other ways in. Places we could go without the... There's no need to think on evil memories when there will be plenty of evil down there. Nick holds my paw. We don't have to go in with us, Sam. I'm grabbing enough gold for the both of us. I want to live in the world without you for all the gold in the mine, Nick. Might as well have died that day you found me with my head split open. You've already been good to me. The both of you. I looked at Yao as well, whose ears splay back. Yeah, you too, Yo. I do not need any praise. But you should take it. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't have known the right way to run when... Well, when we saw whatever it was we saw the last time. If hell wants me, then you're both standing in its way. The only hell I believe in is the one that people keep making. When it comes time for us to crawl out of it, let us lend each other the strength to crawl out together. He grabs Nick and he grabs me. Let us be brothers before and after this ordeal. And whatever comes next. Or to consider your family, Yao. How could I not when you and Sam are the ones who have to part with my snore in all these years? They look to me as they both want to know what's on my mind. I don't know what family is. I feel stupid for saying it, but it's the truth. Family to me means people who yell. People who want the pigs bled out and walk walls whitewashed for the sun is higher than noon. Y'all don't remind me of a family. I want what this is. Just in a better place, under better circumstances. They both aren't meeting my eyes right now. Can y'all just make me a promise? I do not make promises. What's on your mind, Sam? We don't manage to get the gold after all. Can y'all just leave me down there? Tired of tasting a piece of something I might never have. Nikolai places his hands on my shoulders. No. Then he pulls away from me. We'll get the gold. 
and then we will get you. He smiles at me. His gaze is intense. No brother left behind. We go back to staring at the boulders. I'll go first. He doesn't know either of us to protest, just starts to climb. I can smell the weeds and the fresh dirty kicks up as he scrambles to the top, the knees of his jeans dusty. Yo practically leaps up the rocks, leaving little evidence of his trace as he reaches the top. I don't make as much of a mess as the cliffside ascend in as Nick did, but I'm still fairly slow and bulky rising up. Yo and Nick both offer a hand at the same time as they rise. I take Nick's hand first, then the tiger's. Whoa! Together they lift me so quickly and so forcefully that it feels like I'm flying for a moment. But I land gracefully on my feet. Do you both remember the way in and out? Surprisingly, I do. What's your need if we do not separate again? Sometimes there's a good reason to. I remember. Then let us go. One by one we drop down into the fissure. All of us have to crouch to avoid the stalactites and the rest of the cavern ceiling. We go left first. Then instead of going left where Jack led me, we go right. I picture the map in my head, and Yao stern glares when he'd instruct me on which direction I should go, even after getting turned around. It's fuzzy, but it's there. After that ride you go as straight as you can without stopping. You take a left at the dead end, then a right at the corner. And another right. Then you take a left at the T-junction and all the way straight and you can't go straight anymore. To the tunnel with the big fissure. We have almost made it. What shall we do for your voices? Ignore them. He hands each of us a burlap potato sack. We should have as much gold as these bags in our pockets can carry. He passes me a pick and a hand crank. Wouldn't be faster to use dynamite. We don't know anything about the natural integrity of these caves, Sam. A blast could cause a cave in. The work will be slow but discreet. It is the safest way to do this for more reasons than just a cave in. We all take a look at the fissure in the wall. You can tell that Nick is tense because he isn't humming. You can tell that Yao is tense because he isn't moving. The three of us step through the threshold. We hear the sound of running water again, like before. But thankfully, nothing else. The gold veins glitter in the light of Nick's cap. For a moment we have more awed by the divinity of nature than scared of it. Nick takes the first plunge into the oar with his pick. I'm terrified. I expect to hear a scream off the earth itself to quake and rumble. But the rock speckled with glitter tumbled down at his feet cleanly. Yao uses a hand crank to drill holes into the larger pieces of ore and takes care of the rest with his pickaxe. Ask Nick where I should aim each time with his chuckles and points. Feels like it takes a few hours to fill the bags with rocks. They're really damn heavy when I put the sack on my back. I'm glad my job demands to keep the muscle or else I'd probably be struggling right now. Yao grunts as he wears the sack too and wipes his forehead with the back of his hand. Now we have finished the easy part. I'm too busy to catch my breath before I can respond. That was the easy part. The hard part by storing and transporting the cold not only the mine but out of the city. It's too precious to leave in the bunks. Nothing we put there is safe anyway. He adjusts his cap. How utilitarian of you. You are starting to sound more like me. Well, what else was I going to say? I know in you, I thought you'd consider saying goodbye to everybody the hardest thing. Oh, don't remind me. I was right then once we have all this money to our names. It's not to be goodbye forever. And it won't be. As long as nobody becomes suspicious of us. We're rich now, why don't we ride out of town in style? We could afford the fanciest cart on the train. After all this, I say we deserve it. No. Tickets are trackable. Are you coming with us, Yo? I would like to. So there is another I'd like to travel with us. If you'll listen to me. 
Who is it? The tiger exhales. The sable, Chang Fulin. You mean the opium dealer? Yao frowns. I wonder what he would say if he knew it as the first thing people think of him now. He shakes his head. I want him away from those people. But we cannot tell him about the gold. I ought to try convincing him another way. If he does not come with us after one last attempt to convince him, then I'll be content with leaving him here. Sounds like you already expect him to say no. I hope he'll say yes once he hears what he needs to hear. Who will you say goodbye to? Will, Cynthia, Dora. That is, if I can face them, madam. She's always better to me than she had to be. As low as I was to be in my position. I'm trying to stop talking with William once we're out of Echo. Maybe I'll come to his senses and work in a better city. We'll see how he reacts to everything tonight. He reacts to what? Briggs called the National Guard. The National Guard? These men are in danger. We know, Yao. That's why we had to get the gold tonight. If Will is present, I think you'll be able to keep everybody safe. Against the guard? That is a considerable amount of faith placed in one man. Nick puts both of his hands on Yao's shoulders. I frequently place a considerable amount of my faith in one man. Solidarity forever, friend. The tiger's ears flick and he closes his eyes, nodding. A solidarity forever. I stare at the two who seem to be in a moment of silence. That's the thing the communists say when they agree to share everything, right? Uh, not exactly so. The tiger shrugs. Uh, close enough. The both of us have been sharing you at the very least. True. Nick's brow furrows and he blinks a bit. Uh, what? I do not worry about it. Now then. We should think about where we're going to stow the gold before we go back into town. As long as we don't keep it in the mines. Well, I would hope that point is a given. Nick still looks like he's thinking a great deal about something. Then it looks like he puts it to rest. We could bury it like Corsairs used to. Without losing it? I'd rather keep it in plain sight. Surprising if you are willing to sort through a bag of dirty laundry, that is the first thing they find when looking for something. Let us put them in our travel cases before the sun rises. Agreed. I got the feeling Nick's sad that he won't get to bury any gold like a pirate would. Very well then. What we hear shakes us to our core. It's a terrible blast. And then a rumble. The cavern around us shakes and rumbles. I can feel my heart thump in my chest. What's happening, Nick? He doesn't answer so much as tackle me, taking me to the floor. Puts his arms and his head over me, burying my skull in his neck. There's a roar of earth and water bellowing all around me. And then there's nothing. Nothing except for the sound of him breathing above me, slowly. Nick, are you okay? I'm fine. Is Yao okay too? We hear a sputtering sound and then a growl. I am fine. We're lucky. What do you mean, lucky? Looks like he doesn't want to say what he's about to say next. Cavens are often lethal or cause serious injury. Cavin? I crawl out from under Nick's body and look towards the fissure in the wall. It's completely covered up with rock. Part of the tunnel behind it must have collapsed. Shit. I look on the floor for any sign of a pick or hand crank underneath the rubble. I pick up one rock. But three more fall in its place. It all makes a terrible crunching noise. This is something splitting by the seam. You might not want to be so hasty. There's nearly 500 metres of dirt above us and 4,000 metric tons of water in the aquifer above. There's likely another way out. There's only water down here. Considering that there are a great many things put down here that are not accounted for in the foreman's paperwork. 
the fact that Yao is down here at least makes me feel a little better. If there's anybody who could find a way out of it, it's him. That's what I'm talking about. We stop talking when we hear the voice. Roger sounds hurt. I just want him to be once a cut of the overtime. I know those voices. You can have the damn tunnel. I open up a big ass chasm. It's ain't the kind of stuff the boss was talking about. I don't know what it is. You hear the assayer. No way how river was sampled that and this all wouldn't have rich veins of gold or silver deep down. I want to get close enough to make sure. There's a blue jay and a golden retriever. Nate and Ben without a goddamn doubt. Don't mind if I need gold, we're buried with it. We blast our way in, we can blast our way out. He set off the blast? A fucking course he did. Burn. Nick cuffs his hands. What the? The dog's eyes go wide and he sees the light of Nick's hat in the darkness. Ah, just some of the foreigners. I ain't foreign, you dumb piece of shit. Well, with the company you keep, you might as well be. What the fuck are the foreigners doing up there? That's a god good goddamn question. There are the mine is uncharted. What exactly do you think you're all doing down here? Don't ask them that. That's something they know a way out. Settle down, Nate. Don't tell me to settle down. Rogers could be into the rubble if the rocks caught him. Look, I think I see blood. That's not blood, that's groundwater. The tunnel up here connects to the rest of the mine. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The blue jay looks overjoyed. You can be able to make it out of here. Ben squints and points a finger up at me. Now that don't make no sense. How do you get your anxious the mark shattering? Ain't nobody knows about it. There's a fissure in the rock they overlooked. You were tasked to dig this deep too, yes? By the boss? Yeah, that's right. So were we. Nick and I both turned to him, gobsmacked by the blatant lie he just told. Bullshit. It is truth. He said dig for deep, and we could for dinosaur worms. Said they could be found at the bottom of the underground rivers. Dangerous, but worth for us. Triple the pay. Nathan Ben snored. Oh, that just sounded a lot more like him. Maybe you're supposed to be here after all. Nick lowers his voice. Oh, don't provoke them. We have the tools we need to get out. What do we know about them? Can't tell you much about the bird, but that dog's fucking crazy. You try to do anything for him, you just end up hurt or worse. Nick speaks up again. Was it possible to go back the way you came? We'd do that already if we could. I told you we could. No, we're not fucking doing it, asshole. How long exactly do you think you are talking back to me like that? Did you get who's lead in this run? Sounds to me like you're forgetting the objective of the job. You can barely do check ship with that Rogers, we don't even know his condition. I'm not going to die in a hole for your pride. I think I'm ever going to let you in a job after this year bail out now. Wake up, jackass. You need to get out of here. The foreigners have to show up some way, somehow. They know the way out, they know the way out. It's that simple. And I hear I thought the albino was dumb. You have tools. We know way out. Why not make obvious trade, yes? We help one another. You must be like his oriental to save the ocean blue. The bird crouched down to pick up a hand crank. He starts walking towards us, then suddenly stops. His mouth opens like he's going to speak, but instead he gurgles. What? Ben pulls the pickaxe from his body and tosses idly to the side of the floor. I told this man to listen. You mongoloids really think you're slick, don't you? You really think I'd fall for a stunt now and plain as day and see the goddamn lachwa in his cap? Briggs would not allow that. Briggs does not want you. He can't use you. He knows it. You know it. 
I know it. For all Nathan seemed to know it, but he's too busy insulting everybody to know when he's burned up with all his goodwill. You're all up to something. Now, I might not know what it is. But it's pretty clear he's a criminal against the interests of CSCG as a whole. You just killed a man. Nope. Two foreigners and Albino just killed a man. They panicked and squabbled over whose fault it really was. The only man the tools to get out of this mess waited for them to take care of one of them until he could claw his way out. I can promise you that's the story that makes it the papers if you get to see him. Why do you care so much about legality? So, oh, you're smarter than you sound. Or I guess I could say dumbest and you just let me know I shouldn't address me you anymore. Why waste corruption on a violent killer? You are a force of nature. Only strength or will can break you. We could try and rush me with their tools. He takes out a pistol. But I don't much care for your chances. I'd rather get dismiss and bury us all. I'd be good enough to shot to get you all at once. So what do you want then? Was I not clear? I want you to try and kill each other. I'm probably like the last one of you live since I need you for the way out. We're not going to do that. Well, maybe not yet. I have a feeling you all start a little desperate after a few days in here without food. I'm not sure I have a good enough reason to turn on each other. Yeah, you're all here because you found something. All treasure's a lot nicer than one third of a treasure, right? I think for a moment another cave-in is about to happen. Something big and stone-coloured dangles from the ceiling, dropping behind Ben like a boulder. And when I see the legs extend their ears, it looks like a belly. We all stare at it. The thousands of soculous eyes stare back. I feel the scream about to escape my throat as Yao covers my mouth with his paw. Ben smiles a sickly grin from ear to ear. How are he starting? I raise it if Yao wanted to snap my neck, he could. But he doesn't. He was muffling my yell. But as Ben waits, then notices and turns to see what we're looking at, the horrible noise escapes him. Oh, mother of God! The dog recoils, stumbling over rocks and twisting his ankle before falling to the rapids below. His scream turns into a gargle as he's sucked into the water. If Ben isn't what kills us, it might be this. But it's not coming after us. It isn't going to the water after Ben. It walks after what we think is the corpse of Nate. Most of me is horrified. The other part of me is raging with hatred for myself and the monster in front of me, telling me to go. Another part of me wants to see what it does. It wants to understand the workings of something it shouldn't know. After all, whatever is before me might be divinity of a kind. Don't look, don't stay, don't dance in the web. I feel Nick's burly arm grab me and bring me back. Yeah, runs behind the thing, grabbing a pick and hand screw before coming back to us. He doesn't chase him. He doesn't seem to notice him. But for a moment, all of the eyes look at me. And I close mine. There we are. That is as far as we can go in Nick's route at the moment. I think we may have just seen part of the entity from Echo. I'm not quite sure what that is, but it's something nasty there. Also, some nice representations of the very racist attitudes of the time. America, I am looking at you. Don't look away. Yes, you. I know a lot of you are pretty good these days, but never forget. And uh, I can honestly say I understand how uh, Nick feels with being told Nikolai Kroll is not his name. It's very common for English speakers to want to decide their language is the best. I should know I'm Welsh. Uh, yes, uh, if you are uncomfortable with this stuff and the racism in this story, you should be. It's uh, not that comfortable to read, but there we go. This is what things were like, and I have to 
So George, he's done a good job with actually not glossing over some of the homophobia and racism that was definitely going around at this sort of time. It's not a comfortable read, but we need to read it. A slightly less uh, difficult read. It'll be coming next week. We are returning after a bit of a long gap to the Minotaur Hotel. I'm looking forward to going back to see what's going on with that stereo on there. And as we go through October, there will be a few uh, short stories suitable for the spooky month going on. I hope to do one uh, next week. Uh, we'll see how that goes. It's been interesting the past few days. Yeah, we'll go into detail, but uh, yes, there's been a lot going on. But, uh, as before, <laughs> usual before I go, I'd say thank you to all my donors on Kofi and Patreon. You are very much appreciated. And my top patrons are Andy Peng, Smuto, Omar, Nova Starburn, Harvest Mouse Productions, Bieka, Kartek, Goa Zvisa, Lexi Bucciarati, Bastian, Brian Hall, Tiger Cub, Ada Korval, Anubis Silverwind, Dissonance, Grizz, Spiderling, Kopi, Cindy Dragowolf, Evan King, Exac, Aaron Fox, Mohammed Al Zamal. Special thanks to all of them. So yes, until we return with Manitou Hotel or a short story in the week. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. <laughs>